Hello, everybody. This is Don Shum, Vice President of Audiology at Oticon, and I want to welcome you to the very first installment of Season 1 of the new Oticon podcast program. What I want to accomplish with this series of short audio podcasts is to give you an insight into the way we at Oticon think about audiological issues. We know that patients come to you looking for solutions to a very difficult problem, which is hearing loss. We have for a long time approached this problem with a very specific idea of what we are trying to accomplish. Throughout the course of these podcasts, what I hope to do is to give you some look, a, a, a deeper dive, so to speak, into the way we see the problems that patients are facing and the way we try to solve those problems for you and for them. The very best place to start this discussion is to talk about what we mean when we use the term brain hearing. Several years ago, we sat down and we recognized that we were following a very consistent pattern of development of solutions that followed some very core principles that we held very closely at Oticon. But we had never really done a very good job of communicating that set of principles to you, the professional who we work through. And so we decided that we had to find a way of capturing the nature of the way we approach solutions. And the outcome of that project was the concept of brain hearing. And what brain hearing is, isn't necessarily a specific technology that we develop, but rather it is the working philosophy we have whenever we create solutions that try to solve the biggest problems that patients with hearing loss are facing. At the heart of brain hearing is the basic truth that speech understanding is a cognitive process. It is something that happens in the brain. The ear's job is to take acoustic input and turn it into a neural code then send that up to the auditory cortex. But when the patient is actually understanding speech, they are using their cognitive system. And speech understanding is not determined solely by the encoded acoustic signal that comes in from the periphery, but it is also very much determined by a variety of other cognitive processing that happens to allow the person to actually come to meaning and understanding of what was being said. And the meaning and understanding comes from a variety of, of activities that happen within the cognitive system. It is our fundamental belief that the main job of amplification is to make sure that we are supporting the brain in the best way that we possibly can. We understand that the patient is dealing with a condition where the neural code that's created in the auditory periphery is going to be incomplete, is going to be distorted, and is not going to give complete information to the cognitive system. The best we can do though is to try to manipulate sound before it goes into the peripheral auditory system so that after the peripheral auditory system does whatever it's going to do to the signal, the brain still has the best fighting chance of getting information from that signal. And we believe there are very specific things that we want to do in technology to try to create a signal that the ear and most importantly the brain can get the most information from. There are certain things that all hearing aid companies would agree are good things to do with the amplified signal in order for the patient to understand the most information as possible. For example, the brain loves a good signal to noise ratio. So whatever you can do to maximize the speech signal and minimize the competition is a good thing. But there are different ways to do that and I'll deal with that topic in a later podcast. But there are other topics that we place special focus on at Oticon that aren't necessarily shared throughout the industry. For example, our spatial sound system was developed in order to provide full localization information to the brain information that had been oftentimes lost with uh, modern nonlinear hearing aids. With the speech guard system, we talked about trying to preserve as much information as possible in the speech signal. And most recently with OpenSound Navigator, we have 
challenge the notion that you have to close off the patient's listening space in order to give them a fighting chance to hear and understand speech in complex environments. We believe, and we believe that we have proven, that that is simply not the case, that you can provide the patient with access to a, a full range sound environment and still allow the patient to understand speech uh, at extremely high levels in these complex environments. So when you hear us use the term brain hearing, it's important for you to understand that what you're hearing is our core philosophy, the way that we really think about the problem of creating solutions for the patients that you see every day. Our goal is to allow the patient to have optimal use of the very best signal processor that's available, which is the human brain. And we believe that there is a consistent pattern of development at Oticon that shows that we take this point seriously. And when we develop solutions, we are developing it to be able to support the brain in the very best possible way. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you're free to contact me. My email is pretty easy to, to remember. It's d.shum at oticon.com. Thank you for your time. And I hope you have a very nice day.